Medieval Misadventures, Episode 27, Zella and the Story of Timothy. Paxton had had a long day of work and was looking forward to a well-earned rest at the diesel works. He reversed slowly over the bridge that was before the sheds and went through the small tunnel. But as he exited the tunnel, he went over a small patch of oil and accidentally slipped a little and he bumped into something at the shed behind him. Whoops, he said. Sorry about that. He didn't know it was a line of fuel tankers he had bumped into. There was no response, so Paxton just went back onto the turntable, spun on it, and reversed into one of the sheds. He was too tired to even look at what he had bumped into in the sheds. None of the other diesels had noticed the fuel tankers in the shed. A couple minutes later, Span can arrive with the diesel works after his long day of work. Since he was going forward, he was quick to notice the fuel tankers in the shed as he went over the bridge. He prepared to slow down as he went down the hill. But then he slipped on the patch of oil and slid across the turntable. Spankan shut his eyes, thinking he was going to crash into the fuel tankers, but just then a gust of wind blew the shed door shut. Spankan ran into it and fell over. The other diesels were startled awake. Oh, dizzy diesels, what's going on out here? asked Dart. The other diesels rolled out of their sheds and looked at Spankan. Just then, the shed door of another shed opened up and out rolled Diesel 10. Spankan, what's the big idea? he said. Why are you running down the line and smashing into the shed door? Uh, I'm sorry, said Spankan. I was trying to stop, but there was a patch of oil on the track right there. I almost would have hit the fuel tankers there in the shed and... Wait, fuel tankers? said Diesel 10. Yes, said Spankan. I could see them in the shed right as I came down the hill. Thankfully, the door shut before I could crash into them. Now who put fuel tankers in that shed? asked Diesel 10. He looked at the other diesels, particularly at Bowler. Uh, I didn't do it, he said. It's true, said Den. Me and Dart were he back here before him and we didn't see him do anything. We didn't do it either, said Dart. Well, someone did, said Diesel 10. Um, I think I saw someone move those tankers into the shed when I was loading cars at this loader earlier today, said Sydney. Who was it? asked Diesel 10. Um, uh, sorry, I forget, said Sydney. The other diesels rolled their eyes. Well, said Diesel 10, we'll take care of this in the morning. And he rolled back into his shed. Oh, hey, hey, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. Den and Dart rolled back into their sheds. And Bola reversed further back into his spot in the shed. Paxton, however, was a little worried. Who would have put the fuel tankers in the shed? It would have surely caused a nasty explosion if someone crashed into them, and it could have maybe started a fire that could burn down the entire diesel works. Paxton didn't want anyone else to hit span can or the shed, so he had the turntable spun around so that if anyone slipped on the oil, the turntable would stop them before they could reach the shed. Paxton then reversed into his shed and tried to get some sleep. The next morning, a tow truck came to get Span Can back on the rails, and the patch of oil was also cleaned up. While Span Can rolled into the shed to have his front buffers repaired, Paxton took the fuel tankers back to the yard. 
On his way to the yard, Paxton had to stop at a signal at the Steamworks Junction to allow Henry to pass through for good strain. On one of the flatbeds was Thomas. Thomas was soaking wet and very cross. What happened to you, Thomas? asked Paxton. Sorry, said Henry. We can't stay and talk. I need to get Thomas to the Steamworks and then deliver my train to the mainland kingdom. If you want to know what happened, talk to Zelda in the yard. She was there when it happened. The points then changed. The signal went up and Paxton continued on his way. As Paxton continued on his way to the yard, he passed by the washdown, and there he saw Percy, covered from smoke box to cap in sticky gooey chocolate. What happened to you, Percy? asked Paxton. Well, said Percy. I was on my way back to the shed after my mail run, when two of the negatives pushed some chocolate cards onto the crossing. <laughs> get clear, negative four. This is gonna get messy. <laughs> no, 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 don't leave us here. And I smashed into the chocolate carts and got chocolate all over my lovely green paint. Oh dear, I'm so sorry to hear that, said Paxton. Yeah, said Percy. Well, when I got here, I noticed Timothy the number zero emptying all the soap and water from the tower here. Now I've got to wait for more soap and water to be delivered before I can get cleaned up. And by the time it arrives, this chocolate will be almost impossible to get off. Paxton frowned. He didn't like it when Timothy and the negatives caused trouble for his friends. Just then, Mystery puffed in with the water tanker. At the same time, Emily puffed in with the bubblesome trucks. Sorry I'm late, Percy, said Mystery. I could have gotten here earlier, but I had to take a detour because of some blown up tracks. Whoa, blown up tracks, said Paxton. I had to take a detour because of blown up tracks too, said Emily from inside the shed. Who could have blown up the tracks? asked Percy. It's a mystery. But Paxton had a feeling he knew who was responsible. And he continued on his way to the yard. After a while of traveling, Paxton finally arrived at the shunting yard. He shunted the fuel tankers into an empty siding. In fact, all the signs were empty, except for one where Zella was resting. Paxton rolled up into the sign and stopped in front of Zella. Hi Paxton, said Zella. What brings you here? Paxton told Zella about how there had been some fuel tankers in one of the diesel work sheds waiting to be crashed into. Oh dear, said Zella, that's very serious. I'm glad nothing bad happened other than Span Can hitting the door and coming off the rails. Yes, said Paxton. Thank goodness the tankers weren't hit hard enough to blow up. I mean, I bumped into them when I was coming back, but I was reversing, so I didn't know they were tankers behind me. Zella sighed. Well, we've been having quite a lot of mishaps lately, she said. Yes, indeed, said Paxton. Thomas was in some kind of mishap. He was on a flatbed on Henry's train when I was on my way here, and he was soaking wet. Henry said you might know what happened. You were there when Thomas had his accident. Yes, I was there, said Zella. I'll tell you what happened. And she did. I was at the docks being shunted. Salty and Porter had stopped to talk for a little bit, and Carly was getting ready to unload pipes on Salty's flatbeds. At that moment, Stefano came into the docks. He had been giving Thomas a ride along the ocean that evening, and now Thomas was ready to be put back on the rails. So Cranky swung his hook around, picked up Thomas, and 
began to lower him down to the tracks. Suddenly at that moment, Zero came into the docks. Zero, as you may remember, is the truck counterpart of Timothy the number Zero. Anyways, Zero came down the line and hit Thomas before he could be placed on the track. Thomas flew off Cranky's hook and he landed on the pipes on Salty's flatbeds. He then rolled off the pipes and splashed into the ocean. Everyone was shocked at what had just happened. I could do nothing but watch as Zero raced away from the docks. Carly fished Thomas out of the water as quickly as she could, but the damage had already been done. I felt very sorry for Thomas. He had only just come back from the works after his accident at the quarry not too long ago. That's terrible, said Paxton. It is, said Zella. Why must Timothy, the negatives, and Zero be so naughty? I mean, I know there are lots of villains who are naughty, but those guys in particular are especially naughty. They've been causing a lot of trouble since like the start of the kingdoms, as far as I know, yeah, why are they so naughty? Zella sighed and looked around. I happen to know the story behind that, she said. I mean, I know why they went bad, and I know some stuff about them before that, and well, I pretty much know a lot about their past. Really, said Paxton. Do you think you could maybe tell me the story while I've got nothing to do? Well, okay, said Zella. And she started to tell the story of Timothy the number zero, as well as the negatives and zero the truck. <laughs>